Hey guys, so since my last post, um, I made sushi when we got home from Canada with the coho salmon we caught straight from the ocean. And since I made that post, I've had a lot of people ask me how I make my sushi. So I just thought we're making it again. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and record it this time and show you guys all the tips and tricks. I mean, I don't have a ton. I haven't made it a ton, but every time I make it, it just gets better and better. So maybe this will be helpful to somebody. All right, guys, so Jamie is the expert flair. So I'm gonna have him cut this salmon up for us. What are you doing right now, taking off the bones? Yep, stripping it of the bones. We got rib cage. And you got some little pinwheel bones right along here. You gotta pluck out. And he plans on doing that with a pair of tweezers. Never felt tomorrow closing in this fast. Oh, I guess time's in a rush. They usually start from the top and go down. But at least they grow back while I'm only because it makes it easier to find the first one. And I'd like to just mention that we did go ahead and rinse these off in cold water before doing this. It just takes off any extra slime, anything that was packaged with it. So now he's just going to take the skin off the other side and then we'll show you how he cuts it for the sushi. Just kind of want to angle your knife slightly towards the skin. And why do you want to do that? So you save as much meat as possible. So he's going to just cut these into thin little strips. And once he's done doing that, I will show you the process I take for, it's basically kind of like a ceviche. With ceviche, you use lime or some kind of acid to cook the fish. Um, these have already been frozen, so any, um, what is it, worms? Parasites. Parasites have already been froze out, but I do a, an acid bath with a rice vinegar and I will show that to you here in a bit.
So he's going to go ahead and finish, do the same process on this one, um, cutting it into strips. And then once he's done with that, I will show you my next steps. All right, guys. So now he has all the salmon cut up and I'm just going to put it all in the same bowl that I put the last filet in. And I'll show you what my next steps are. All right, so next I'm going to use some rice vinegar. I use the seasoned kind, um, just because this is the same kind of vinegar, rice vinegar I use for the sushi rice I make, which I have already pre-made that because it does have to be cooled. Um, I use a an Instapot recipe, so I will link it in the bottom if you wanna see that recipe. And so I usually just dump, I don't do any measurements, I just dump it so it's covered. Um, but I do half of this and half water just so it deletes it a little bit. So we'll call that good. And I'm just gonna put some water in this real quick. And I'm just using cold water from the faucet. And then next, I'm just gonna put some salt in here. We use sea salt, so you guys can use whatever kind of salt you want, kosher salt. And then I just mix it up and you're gonna let it sit. I'm gonna put it back in the fridge and let it sit for about five minutes. It does not take very long. Um, depends on how much vinegar you put in there. Um, You'll be able to see and I'll show you once it sits for a little bit how it looks once it's been um, basically fermented from the acid. All right guys, so it's been about five minutes or a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and take the salmon out of the fridge and I'm just gonna rinse it completely off with water. So I usually just put the put it through the strainer to rinse it off. If we look at it you'll see that it kind of has this pale tint to it now it's not as bright but that just means that the acid basically cooked it all right so the first thing i'm going to make is i'm going to make some sushini rolls so i have my rice here it's all nice and cooled and we're just going to make these into like little rectangles and then this is the sashimi where you just set a piece of the fish on top. I do dip my fingers in water. This rice is super sticky so it just helps it not stick in your hands as much. So I'm just gonna show you a few of these. These are the most simple way to make a sushi. So that's all I do is I just make some rectangle rice balls and then I usually go through my fish and find the bigger pieces. And with these ones, you're just going to simply lay it on top of your fish. So there is a simple sashimi roll. 
So next I will show you how I do my actual um, rolls with the salmon, rice, and uh, seaweed sheets. All right, so I'm gonna show you two different ways that I make my sushi rolls. Um, I do use the seaweed, so I do a seaweed with the rice inside and vegetables or just the meat. And then I will do a wrap that's the rice on the outside with just a strip of the seaweed with vegetables or just meat. And I'll show you the difference between those two. All right, so the first thing that you'll wanna do is I go ahead and lay some um, saran wrap on top of my sushi roll or sushi sheet. Um, you don't have to use these, you can just use saran wrap and just put your rice and seaweed on top of here. Um, I just find it easier to use the um, sushi rolls. Alright, so for the first one, I am going to just put some rice down first. Sometimes the rice might get a little too cold. You might have to add a little bit of water or some rice wine vinegar in here to um, loosen it back up, which I am going to do. It gets super sticky, so you want it to be where you can actually work with it, but you do need it to be dried out and sticky as well, so. So I'm gonna just show you the simple way I do this. Everybody can do it whatever way they need to. So I find it easier to use my hands. So yes, of course I do wash my hands very well. And I'm going to just lay this rice out so that it is on top of just the sushi roll. This is how I've done it. Um, this is how I find it easiest for me. Um, if you guys have any tips, tricks, any easier way to do it, let me know. I would be grateful for some tips here. This rice does get super sticky. Also, it is kind of time consuming. So yeah, if you have a, an easier, quicker way, let me know, leave those comments, especially when I have to make several rolls in a night. All right. later is going to be our seaweed sheet. And I use a couple different types of um, sauces. So one of them is I do make a spicy mayo. So it's just mayonnaise and sriracha. And then I also use just cream cheese. So I just use the whipped cream cheese. It does spread easier, I find. So I'm just gonna spread this all across 
the top of the seaweed. And you can take it out a little bit before you need to use it just so it's softened up a little bit more and makes it easier. All right, now that we have our cream cheese on here, I've already pre-cut my avocado and cucumber. This is just what we like to use in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay a strip of cucumber. And then I do a layer of avocado. And then on top of that, I just start laying the salmon down. You can do as little or as much as you would like. I forgot to mention that when you do lay your vegetable layer down and your meat, try to make it so it's closer to the back side here so that when you're rolling it, it's at the beginning. All right, so I just kind of fold over my saran wrap layer and then I roll my sheet. Now this is a learning process, but once you learn it, it's pretty easy. So you have to roll your sushi mat and kind of pull the saran wrap at the same time. And then I just kind of fold it back as I go. And that makes it so I can roll it all the way up. We pull it back. We'll see that I have the folded up piece here right on the edge. And then I kind of unroll it again, roll my mat over and just continue to roll it until it's nice and tight. That way it's already covered in my saran wrap. I just cover the ends and then put it back in the fridge. I let it cool a little bit before I do cut it. Um, just so it's all binded together. And there is the first one I like to make. So I'm gonna lay our sushi mat out again. And same thing, I'm just gonna put the saran wrap over the top of it. and love it when it likes to stick together. I wish they made an easier way to do this sometimes with saran wrap. All right, so this time we're gonna use a full sheet of seaweed. And this is where I like to just add the rice on top of the seaweed. So I will go ahead and do that now. And I still do use the water just to dip my hands to make sure that rice doesn't stick as bad. Now, when I'm sitting here showing you guys how to make it, it's taking me a little bit longer, but I mean, when I'm sitting here just making them, I can make quite a few pretty quickly. Done here. All right, 
so that looks good. So this one, I'm just gonna do a simple salmon, layer of salmon, and I will do some spicy mayo on this one. And I do a little bit more salmon in these ones just because that's the only thing I'm putting in them. And then just squeeze your whatever sauce you want to use. On top. And then the same process, you're just going to start by rolling it over. And get that first layer. Roll your mat with it and just make sure that you keep that saran wrap out. So I usually do like a, just a half of a roll and then come back and make sure my saran wrap's not going under. Then I'll fold it back over and finish that roll off. And then just roll it up. As you can see, I may have gotten a little too much rice on that one, but that's fine. It doesn't hurt anything. It'll still cut the same and eat the same. So just roll that up and then put it in the fridge. So I usually put them all in the fridge. And then once I get all of my rolls done is when I will cut them. All right, guys, so I am just going to show you those two types of sushi rolls that I make. Obviously, there's several different kinds of types you can make. Um, I usually do an imitation crab with avocado and just like a California roll. Um, I've also done it where I fry it in egg and panko, on a California roll, which they're delicious. So I do recommend trying that. I'm just going to go ahead and finish by cutting up these two rolls I've previously made and I'll show you how I cut those up just to make it easier for myself. Um, again, if you guys have any tips, tricks, comments, let me know and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you how I cut these up. I'm going to go ahead and take them out of the saran wrap. And I do have a sushi knife, which has the holes. It's supposed to make it so, of course, it doesn't stick as much. But I also do wet my knife with the water. Um, just makes it so it doesn't stick. And that first one's always a little difficult. And that is what... So this has the spicy mayo and just the salmon. And I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it out here on the sheet. Leaves are falling down, but at least they grow back while I'm on a one-way track. And then sometimes when you get to the end and it's big and bulky like that, sometimes I'll just leave it. Um, some people like the bigger ones, so. There's that one. And same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and roll this out of the saran wrap. It is getting pretty sticky. This one is the one where I tend to wet it, water it a little bit more because it is straight rice. And that just helps me get a clean, nice clean cut.
All right, guys, so I am all finished. And here is my version of sashimi and uh, sushi rolls with salmon. Um, again, if you guys have any tips, tricks, always leave those comments for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll talk to you guys later. Yeah.